by any measure, <coughs> our country enjoys one of the strongest, most robust, most resilient economies in the entire world. So what on earth are you doing talking down the Australian economy and its prospects? Well, well, well John... Uh, we were heading in the wrong direction under Labor. Slowly and gradually, but not with any of the panic that you're trying to create. Uh, but that's the point. Uh, you've got to turn it round. And, and turn it around slowly is and, the answer. And, and interestingly, uh, interestingly, uh, in four years' time, we've taken uh, Labor's projected $30 billion deficit uh, to under $3 billion. So this is not a drastic turnaround, but it is a very strong medium and long-term shift. It's a drastic turnaround for those who are being asked to pick up the pieces, for the pensioners, for the disability pensioners and age pensioners, for those who are going to have to pay every time they take the kids to the doctor, for people who are paying more for fuel. They all think it's pretty drastic. Well, well, let's look at pensions. There are no changes to pensions uh, in this term of parliament. All that happens is that from uh, the end of 2017, indexation of pensions will be at CPI, rather than at male total average weekly earnings. But pensions will keep going up. In March, the single pension went up by just over $14 a fortnight. It will go up again by a comparable amount uh, in September and so on. Uh, Pensions will keep going up under the coalition. Now, as for the disability pension... Well, I, I, do you mind if I interrupt? Yeah, I don't sure. want to go through these one sure. by one. I want to go back to my initial mm-hmm. question, the GST mm-hmm. in particular. Mm-hmm. You don't strike me as someone who lacks political courage. Well, thank you for that, John. I appreciate that. And yet this is an act of political cowardice. Well, (laughs) this budget is an act of political courage. It's also an act of political necessity because there is no alternative. But to say to the premiers, as Joe Hockey and you have both been doing, to say, well, it's up to you if you Mm -hmm. want to change the GST, that's not showing leadership and that's not showing that you, in fact, are prepared to stand up for what is the subtext of what you're saying, which is I want you guys to do the dirty work for me. Well, well, John, let's look at uh, the factors which have caused the premiers to be unhappy. Uh, Let's look at, at hospital spending. Under the coalition, for the first three years, hospital spending will go up by 9%. In year four, it will go up by about 6%. Now, That's just um, hospital spending. The whole yeah. health system, you're ripping out tens of billions of well, dollars. Well, well, no, but, but as far as the states are concerned, it's the hospital spending that they're worried about. You're cherry-picking that, figures that, here, that, Prime Minister, with respect. Well, let me finish. So, so the hospital spending goes up 9% in three years, and it goes up 6% or thereabouts in year four. Spending is increasing. Now, well, that's not what the premiers I, or the I, health ministers of every state and territory are saying. I don't think we necessarily need to leap to the conclusion, just because spending is going up at 6% rather than 9%, that we suddenly have to increase the GST. I think that's a pretty odd conclusion. Then where else does the money come from? Well, what about looking at government generally, Commonwealth and state government, and trying to be more efficient? Uh, we cannot assume that the answer to every problem is more tax. Uh, that's what Labor did. Uh, Labor's answer to every problem was to borrow and then to tax. I think uh, the first answer to a problem is to try to figure out, A, is it really a problem? And B, if it is really a problem, how can we be more efficient? Where are the efficiencies going to come from, in particular in those states that have already gone through hard times, Tasmania and South Australia? Victoria's economy not as strong as it used to be. All the states, other than maybe Western Australia, are saying there is no way we can handle these cuts without massive impact on services or an increase in the <coughs> GST. So if you are indeed showing leadership, mm-hmm. you would show a path through this instead of saying, well, it's up to you people. But, but John, let's get back to the fundamentals. Hospital spending is going up by 9% in the first three years and some 6% in the fourth year. Why do we suddenly need to raise the GST? Because spending is going up by 6% rather than 9%. That's only hospital funding. Again, Prime Minister, you're cherry-picking figures. Okay, well, let's look at at school funding. The premiers aren't making up this stuff. Well, it's true. It's true that pre-election we said... Uh, that we would be bound by the Rudd-Gillard promises for the first four years, but we wouldn't be bound by them uh, for years five, six and beyond. So all we're doing in the budget is implementing what we said before the election. Uh, What we are doing is increasing spending every year, just not as fast uh, as the Rudd-Gillard government said, because frankly, 
Uh, that was a pie-in-the-sky promise with borrowed money that was never sustainable and it shouldn't ever have been believable. Speaking of pie-in-the-sky and people saying things, on the 30th of August last year, just before we went mm-hmm. to the polls, you sat in that exact same chair with me and this is what you told me about precisely this topic. If we do win the election and we immediately say, oh, uh, it, we got it all wrong, we've now got to do all these different things, we will instantly be just as bad as the current government has been. And I just refuse to be like that. And And that was you on the 30th of August last year. And and John, on schools and hospitals, we were absolutely up front before the election and we are simply doing now what we said we would do before the election. I'm sorry, with respect, Prime Minister, you're not. You're doing precisely what you said you wouldn't do. And we just played yeah. you, your voice, back to you that proves precisely that point. But, but if you go back before the election, we were attacked uphill and down Dale by the Labor Party for not committing to the school and hospital funding beyond the forward estimates. Now, what's happened is uh, that the first of the out years has now come into the forward estimates uh, So we have been absolutely faithful to what we said pre-election. Nearly 70% opposition to the budget. Can you come back from here? Well, I certainly intend to. And my job is not to curry popularity. Uh, My job is to do what's right for our country. And and look, uh, if I have to take a hit for the country's sake, I'm happy to do it. But if it continues, if you can't turn this around in the next couple of months as you head towards a Victorian state Mm -hmm. election... There will be an impact. I'm sure Dr Napthine has quietly and persuasively made that point to you. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with the Premier, as you'd imagine, John. Uh, All of them cordial. Uh, Some of them, yes, uh, uh, fairly fairly blunt. If if they lose office, they'll uh, in part blame you, won't they? I don't believe they will lose because uh, they are a good government. They are committed to the East-West link. Uh, It's absolutely necessary to solve... Melbourne's traffic nightmare, and we are helping them with the East-West Link. In fact, this is one of the absolute fundamental distinctions between uh, the Victorian coalition government and the Victorian Labor opposition. We believe in building roads, and they don't. We will get to calls in just a moment. Uh, Students have uh, indicated their intention to protest in Geelong today. Mm -hmm. You've cancelled your visit. But vice-chancellors are also protesting, and this morning we've heard on the radio this morning already that the Vice-Chancellors are saying that your plans for university fee overhauls have to be deferred. There are students making decisions in a few months to start courses, Mm -hmm. and they don't know what the fees will be for the courses they're about to start. That's not fair, is it? Well, um, the fees for next year uh, will be whatever the the unis say. No, but but, but, they're starting courses that will go into years two and three into fees they don't know what they'll be. But but our changes will be from the beginning of 2016 because we appreciate that a lot of planning has already been done for 2015. No, but students will be embarking on courses and enrolling in courses where fees will apply in years three or four and 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 they don't know what those fees will be. If you if you start a course under one system, you'll finish it under that system. So the fees will start. That's correct. In twenty sixteen, only for the for students first year. who start in that year. That's right. Even still, they're saying this is too rushed. It's too fast. It should be done more slowly. Well, it's possible that they haven't quite cottoned on to that fact. But uh, if you are studying now, your conditions of study won't change. If you start next year. Uh, your conditions of study won't change. It's only for those who start uh, when these changes kick in in 2016 uh, that we'll have the different conditions applying to them. One more from me, the medical costs, the $7 co-payment is not going to deal with the ever-growing cost of the healthcare system. It's going to a medical research fund. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you're putting up the cost of the medical system to pay for something else. Except the treatments and cures which the medical research will give us will ultimately bring down uh, the cost and increase the effectiveness of our health system. Which what, the, what, the research fund might one day give us. In the meantime, we're going to be paying and paying and paying. 
Look, there's, uh, there's quite a quick translation uh, from the bench to the bedside as things are at the moment. Uh, it may be a matter of just a few years uh, to get Sorry, treatments. Sorry, you're a former health minister. You know I, that's I, not right. I, no, but, but, but I, and preventative I, I, is way better. Mm. Way, way better. Uh, we know that going and seeing a doctor and having early intervention mm-hmm. is the best way of restraining growth of cost. Um, I am a former health minister, John, and, and I know that the reason why we live longer and better today uh, than even a generation ago is because of the work that our researchers do. And it's very, very important for the long-term health of our health system, not just here but right around the world, that these world-class Australian researchers get more support.